welcome future doctors to another wonderful session of chemistry made simple for neat and uh, this is dr radha subramaniam today we are going to continue with uh, organic chemistry class 11 chapter 12 uh, we are continuing with the remaining concepts already i've uploaded uh, uh, two sessions of uh, this chapter so today we are going to continue with the important concepts of the techniques and uh, uh, the basics of organic chemistry so uh, now we will start with the methods of purification of organic compounds. As you know when an organic compound is extracted from a natural source or when it is prepared in the laboratory we have to purify it ok. So many methods are used for purifications of organic compounds a few are mentioned here with these are the common techniques sublimation, crystallization, distillation, differential extraction and chromatography. So I have all given uh, this all these concepts in a nutshell in our mind map. Uh, handwritten mind map that you can refer for quick revisions of this unit. Now what is sublimation? In sublimation the solid substance uh, changes from solid to vapor form without going to the liquid state. So normally it is used to separate sublimable compound from non sublimable impurities. And what is crystallization? And the principle of crystallization is uh, based on the difference in the solubilities of the compound and the impurities in a suitable solvent. So, based on this uh, we can separate the impurities and uh, make the pure substance. Now, distillation. So, this is very important method used to separate one volatile liquids from non-volatile impurities. The liquids having sufficient differences in their boiling points. Okay, now, we have another important method known as chromatography. This is very common. So, in this technique the mixture of substances is applied onto a stationary phase which may be a solid or liquid. A pure solvent, a mixture of solvents or a gas is allowed to move slowly over the stationary phase. See chromatography, it is divided into absorption and partition chromatography. So, absorption chromatography is based on the fact that different compounds are adsorbed on and adsorbent to different degrees. So, we uh, commonly use adsorbents like silica, gel and alumina. And uh, in uh, absorption chromatography, it is divided again into column chrom chromatography and thin layer chromatography. Column chromatography involves separation of mixture over a column of adsorbent that is in a stationary phase which is packed in a glass tube. Then thin layer chromatography is also known as TLC that is another type of adsorption chromatography. So, it involves a separation see um, it is adsorption and not absorption chromatography which involves separation of substances of a mixture over a thin layer of adsorbent which is coated on a glass plate. Okay, now we have something else known as hyper conjugation. So, that is nothing but it is a general uh, in general it is a stabilizing interaction which involves delocalization of sigma electrons of CH bond okay, and uh, of an unsaturated system uh, or to an atom with an unshared p orbital. So, this is a permanent effect uh, you can see uh, the hyper conjug conjugation in propene. So, we will describe it this in detail in another hand uh, know, uh, quick revision classes at a later stage just remember what is meant by hyper conjugation. Next uh, see here CH3, CH2, Cl ok here this is delta this is slightly positive uh, partially positive and uh, CH2 is formed this is uh, this carbon atom becomes partially uh, positive and Cl becomes partially negative. So, this uh, effect decreases uh, when we move away from the atom which is involved in the initial polar bond and uh, becomes negligible from the fourth atom onwards. So, it arises whenever electron withdrawing group is attached to the end of the carbon chain. Then what is electromeric effect E effect? So, this is defined as a complete transfer of shared pair of pi electrons to one of the atoms joined by a multiple bond on uh, demand of an attacking agent very simple. Uh, so, uh, we will see this in uh, uh, two different uh, classifications one is positive electromagnetic effect plus C negative electromagnetic effect E minus and in positive electromagnetic effect pi electrons of the multiple bond are transferred to that atom to which the reagent this C here H plus is the attacking reagent. So, here the reagent gets attached. So, uh, this carbon uh, you know this shifts to this place this bond uh, ok and the hydrogen will get attached to this bond ok and here this carbon atom will get slightly positive charge and negative electromagnetic effect uh, pi electrons of the multiple bond are transferred to that atom to which the 
attacking reagent does not get attached. So, in this case here it will get attached. Uh, no, here the attacking agent is not there. So, here the pi bond uh, will be transferred. Okay, now resonance structure that is a single Lewis structure. It cannot explain all the property of the molecule. So, many Lewis structure are proposed for some molecule to explain the properties why is many things or reactions are happening. So, different Lewis structure proposed are called the resonance Lewis structure or canonical form of contributing structure and this phenomena is called the resonance so, structures proposed are called resonance structures. So, we will see in detail about the so many tricks and all that I will be uploading regarding the resonance structure do not worry about the, you know, if any of you are not following uh, or find it difficult to follow all these concepts we will be doing it in small parts I will be dividing it into small tricks and simple tricks for you to easily work out the uh, uh, theoretically based uh, conceptual questions coming from this portion. So, the resonance structures canonical or contributing structures these are hypothetical and in, in, they individually do not represent any real molecule and the difference in energy between the actual structure and the lower structure that is what is uh, that called it is known as the resonance stabilization energy or simply resonance energy what is it that is the difference in energy between the actual structure and lowest energy structure fine ok now. Uh, there are certain rules which you have to apply while writing a resonance structure. So, first is the same position of the nucleus, second the same number of unpaired electrons. The resonance effect is defined as the polarity produced in the molecule by interaction of two pi bonds or between a pi bond and lone pair of electrons which is present in the adjacent atom. This is nothing very simple. So, that is just the polarity which is formed uh, by uh, interaction of either two pi bonds or a pi bond and a lone pair of electrons. Now, mm -hmm. we already said about positive and negative resonance effect and then inductive effect. Inductive effect is a process of electron displacement of electrons along the chain of carbon atoms due to the presence of polar covalent bond light at one end of the chain. This is a permanent uh, effect and uh, normally it is shown as a uh, by an arrow ok. And, uh, movement of single electron is indicated by single barbed fish hooks that is half headed curved arrow and electron displacement effects uh, these are all uh, coming in covalent bonds. So, uh, it may take place either in ground, ground state because of the influence of atom or substituent group or in the presence of uh, attacking reagent. So, uh, resonance effect and inductive effect comes under this that is electron displacement effect. Then See, you can see the electron movement in organic reactions. Uh, it can be showed by curved arrow notation. See here, from pi bond to adjacent bond position. See, shown like this. See the arrow. Okay. Then from pi bond to adjacent atom. See here. See pi bond to adjacent. This is adjacent bond position. This is adjacent atom. And from atom to adjacent bond. See. Remember uh, the movement of the uh, shifting movement of the arrows. This is very important. Okay, learn to differentiate between all the three. Now, what are nucleophiles? Nucleophiles it is indicated as NU. It is a reagent which brings an electron pair that is nuclear seeking and that reaction is called nucleophilic reaction. Okay. And now, uh, next is uh, electrophile E plus. It is a reagent that takes away an electron pair that is electron seeking and uh, uh, the reaction is called electrophilic and during a polar organic reaction nucleophile attacks electrophilic center of the substrate and which is that specific atom or part of electrophile that is electron deficient. And electrophiles attack uh, at nucleophilic center which is electron rich center of the substrate. So, I will uh, explain in detail about uh, uh, nucleophiles and all that and uh, next uh, we have got uh, uh, next is. Uh, Heterolytic cleavage. In heterolytic uh, cleavage, bond breaks in such a fashion that shared pair of, pair of electrons remains with one of the fragments. So, one atom has a sextect electronic structure and a positive uh, charge and other valence octet with at least one lone pair and a negative charge. See here CS3 and Br. Okay, when it splits, see uh, C gets positive charge and uh, C here shifting is shown here, Br is getting a negative charge. Okay. Uh, so, this part is called electrolytic cleavage. Now, why such cleavage results in the formation of neutral species that is atom or group which contains unpaired electrons and we also call this free radicals. And what is homolytic cleavage? See Rx in presence of heat and light R and thus alkyl free radical is formed and X plus this splits. 
organic reactions which proceeds by homolytic fissions are also called free radical or homopolar or non-polar reactions. And what is substrate? That is a reagent which supplies carbon to the new bond and other reagent uh, reactant is called the reagent. So, substrate is one which supplies carbon to the new bond. Then if both the reactants supply carbon to the new bond then choice is arbitrary and uh, in that case the molecules on which the attention is focused then we call that a substrate. Now, reaction mechanism is a sequential account of each step uh, which describes in detail about the electron moment, energies during bond cleavage, bond formation, rate of transformation of reactants to products that is uh, in a nutshell we call all these steps a reaction mechanism. So, I will be uploading you know simple uh, these in simple forms so that all of you can easily understand and work out the concepts and um, with that uh, we are coming to the end of this session you can read this thoroughly this is for the ones who have already finished your uh, lesson uh, revisions and you can go through it and for those who are finding this portions difficult I will be uploading more uh, videos on this topic and all of you please do like share and subscribe to our channel chemistry made so before need and uh, since the exams are approaching uh, I think you are all preparing well for the exams and do uh, watch the motivational videos every Sunday we are posting especially for you the guests are taking special time uh, for you know coming and talking to you uh, through our channel and to motivate you and uh, all our prayers are with you uh, for you uh, our future doctors and wishing you all the best uh, do learn really well and take your exams really serious and thanks for watching the video